And then one of our first finds, and this is my second favorite, this is at another shop where the person had a ton of Griswold. So believe it or not, in the same room, but at the far end of the room, hanging up on the wall, I saw the skillet. And it was hard to see what it was from that distance, so I went over to inspect. It's also a number eight, and you have the pour spouts, not as defined as a Griswold, but pretty well defined. Nice skillet, has some rust in it. But and some utensil marks at the bottom, but it doesn't look like there's any pitting. It also sits flat, does not spin. And we'll flip it over. And lo and behold, this piece is a Wagnerware Sydney, Ohio. Just has some rust and old seasoning that needs to come off. It's a 10580. And you can see the flattened uh, part of the handle that meets the sidewall here, which is character. Okay, guys, what you just saw was a clip when we first got back from Erie PA and the skillets that I picked up and the Wagner number no. 8. Uh, what you're looking at now is how I found it from that video. And you see a lot of rust. You see a lot of carbon. What I didn't realize at the time was it was very stubborn. And I actually thought it was fire damage after taking it out of the lye and the vinegar soak. it was The rust was still there. So it was pretty much from the get-go, a combination of about a week to two weeks in the initial stages of the lye soak followed by the vinegar soak. And there you see the, all the red there. And I just thought it would come right off as it has in the past. But this was just uh, layers of carbon and layers of rust. The person must have seasoned over it or didn't clean it thoroughly and it rusted under the carbon seasoning. You've got to maintain your skillets. And this is the reason, but you don't know until you get into it. This here is after it came out of uh, the lye, the vinegar, and the easy off bags after three days. And I was going to put it into a self-clean oven to try to get off more of the carb. And then after the self-cleaning oven, I needed to put it back into vinegar once again to get off the final carbon. It, this took a variety of techniques. When you don't have electrolysis, you got to be patient. And you have to be willing to try a lot of things. So after I was finally done, this is what the final um, end stage was after stripping. It's down to gunmetal gray. I've gotten everything off, but just a little bit of carbon there in the back. The video will actually show you more or less how this result is, where the carbon came off, from the cooking surface and the bottom. This is just a picture of the final result. I couldn't be happier, but it took about two, two to three weeks total to get it done. Okay, what you're looking at here is my uh, skillet. I'm gonna go ahead and use Easy Off Heavy Duty Oven Cleaner to try to get through this carbon here that you see. It started to flake off in my hands. I thought at first it might be uh, fire damage I didn't really know. I've never had a skillet do this to me before. It was flaky. It was coming off in my hands, but it was still stubborn and hard on the skillet. Uh, craziness. I thought that uh, the molecular structure of the metal had changed. That's what happens with fire damage, but as it turned out, it was just stubborn carbon. We're going to use Easy Off Oven Cleaner. We're going to use garbage bags. I would recommend two garbage bags, heavy duty. I In this video, I only used one. And it kind of leaks through. The lye is really good. And Easy Off Oven Cleaner is only strict, strictly lye. Lye eats through carbon, eats through crud. And um, it basically will actually start eating through the plastic. That's why you definitely need two of these. And when you do it, use gloves, goggles to protect your eyes, and use a mask against fumes, like paint, like a painting mask against fumes, because there will be fumes with this. Use it in a well-ventilated area and shake it really good. And you want to put your skillet in cooking side first, and you want to go ahead and spray the whole thing on the bottom, on the sides, and on the handle. Really, really cover it all really good, and then turn it over, and then spray the bottom, spray the side walls, and then spray the handle. And now the whole thing is covered and it's going to be start working on the whole skillet. Wrap it up really good. Uh, just tuck it underneath your skillet. 
keep it in a well ventilated area away from pets, animals, and children. It is toxic and you don't want it, net to, it'll burn your skin, it'll burn your eyes. It was in there for three days. We checked it after the first day, didn't quite do the job, so I coated it some more, put it back in the bag, added another bag, as you see in this video here. We're going to pull the skillet out to see how much the Easy Off actually did, and we're going to see just in a minute. Make sure you put your gloves back on. You don't really need goggles here, just gloves. Protect your skin, because lye will burn your skin. It won't kill you, but it'll burn your skin. It won't feel good. So we're pulling it out, and you can see how slimy the bags are. That's why I recommend two. So I'm throwing those away. We're going to check the skillet. We're going to rinse out a lot of the um, carbon that the initial lye bath and vinegar soak did not get. And it's starting to clean up better. There is light at the end of the tunnel. But this process can be a long one. Now, granted, electrolysis will be a lot quicker but so I don't really have room right now for an electrolysis bath in addition to my light tank, so I have to go with what I have room for right now. If I did a lot of pieces, I probably would do electrolysis. It's a lot quicker, but you can get them stripped down really nicely by using this method, which is a variety of methods. You just got to keep an open mind on it. And, of course, when you take it out of the easy off, you got to scrub it really good. You want to neutralize the lye with vinegar and Dawn dish detergent. I still have some carbon in there. Still have some carbon on the back. I don't want to use any more Easy Off. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try a self-clean oven. And that's going to be the next step. As you see here, we got it dried off. I sprayed it with cooking spray, as I showed you in a previous video, to prevent flash rust. It's canola oil, non-GMO cooking spray, which I used to cook with. It doesn't really matter. You just want to protect the skillet so it doesn't flash rust. The whole idea is to put it in a self-clean oven for two hours and let it bake in there. It'll bake off that carbon or a lot of it. And uh, if nothing else, it'll flake a lot more of it off. And we're just going to put it in, you know, bottom side up or face down in the oven. And you want to make sure your oven is well vented or your, you know, your vent hood is ventilated so you can vent that off. Now, this is what it looks like when you take it out of the self-clean oven. It's a lot smoother. It appears to have gotten off a lot of the carbon. Now, when you actually put it under water, though, we still see some carbon. So, the decision has been to go ahead and put it back into vinegar, the 50-50 vinegar water combination. You will see my vinegar bath coming up in a couple of minutes, and it looks rusty and red because that's the old rust that has come off of other skillets. It's still effective. It's just not as effective over time. You need to drain it and do another one. It's 50-50 vinegar and water. But, yep, it's gotten a lot of the carbon off, but it still needs to get off every little bit there. You can see some darkened spots on the back there, especially in the middle. And, you know, I'm, I was going to try to sell this one, and I just want it to be attractive. And, you know, the, 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 the name stamp is sort of um, obscure, and here's the vinegar bath. There's the rust. I just skim off the actual foam and everything from the top and continue to use it. Now it's in the drip pan here. We're going to scrub it up again, get off the rest of that carbon, and it soaked in there for a day or two. And you're going to see uh, the final result on the last clip in this video. So that's why you need to stay tuned to see what the final result looks like and how it got everything out. You just got to stay flexible. So I'm going to take it upstairs and show you the final thing. Okay, guys, it is Sunday, August 18th. Yeah, 18th, 2019. And you're looking at by Wagnerware Sydney O, number eight, skillet 10580. And this is the skillet that I just showed you guys, pulling it out of the self-clean oven, putting it back into vinegar. So it's been through a number of treatments, and there's still a little bit of carbon left, but once I get it seasoned, it'll all blend in. I got all the rust removed, and I you know, took it out of the vinegar bath tonight after another, gosh, I can't remember now, a couple of days of soaking after the self-clean oven, and this is the 
inside of it and I uh, sprayed it down with oil just to prevent any flash rust. As you recall, there was a bunch of rust right there, there was a bunch of rust over here, and there was actually a lot of carbon built up on the pore spouts. It's totally gone, and that's down to the bare metal, but I sprayed it with the non-GMO canola oil uh, cooking spray, and that will prevent any rust because I cannot season this right away. So I will be seasoning it probably later in the week when I have some time. Um, maybe not even this week. It's just been really a crazy busy week again. But it all works. So this started out in a lye bath for a few days. It went from the lye bath into a vinegar soak for a few days. That didn't seem to work, so I pulled it out. And you saw it with Easy Off Heavy Duty Oven Cleaner and a garbage bag for three and a half, four days. That didn't fully work, but it kept softening the carbon. So I did the self-clean oven, and more carbon came off. But then when I rinsed it out and put it in a vinegar bath, I saw a lot of carbon still remaining up here. And there is some on the side walls. I really don't care about that. It really isn't as visible. It doesn't affect the cooking. It doesn't even affect the aesthetics of the skillet. But that's where we lie. So it's going to be ready to be seasoned. And once the piece is finished, I will give you an update. So there it is. You can see it really nice now. You can see the model number. It's all come off, but this one took a couple of weeks to do. Now electrolysis would be a lot faster, but for those of you like me that don't have electrolysis, uh, it, you just have to be open to a variety of techniques you don't always know what one is going to work. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Give me a thumb up. Leave a comment or question below. Thanks, and go make it a great day.